Hello, it's Dr. Day Storms, and now we're actually going to be going further and elaborating on a topic that we discussed previously, which was on polarity and how there could be, a, 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 with using electronegativity, that there can be a disproportionate sharing of electrons. We're going to up the ante, so to speak, and now look at the polarity within molecules, and so how it is actually possible that you can have a nonpolar molecule that can contain dipoles. And so this is a molecule that would have dipoles, but no overall dipole moment. Okay, and if I just want to reiterate the fact that electronegativity is perhaps the most, if, if not the most, then one of the most um, important topics to learn and to really grasp, that one should really grasp from general chemistry in order to be successful for organic chemistry and biochemistry later down the road. And so previously we did talk about bond dipoles and how you could have a disproportionate sharing of the electron density between two atoms. So for example, here with carbon dioxide, we can look at this carbon and the oxygen. The oxygen overall is more electronegative than carbon. So it's going to be pulling the electron density towards the oxygen. However, in carbon dioxide, the molecule shape is linear. You can almost think of this as tug of war. And I like the picture down below, which is which is a hypercolored, you know, representation. And overall, the electron density is being pulled, like in tug of war, it's being pulled equally to both sides. And so there's not a disproportionate um, pull to either side in particular. So the molecule overall as a whole does not possess an overall dipole moment. They are being pulled equally to the both sides. And so that's the reason why carbon dioxide is actually nonpolar and it doesn't dissolve well into aqueous environments. So for example, the carbon dioxide in your soda only stays in the liquid under pressure. The moment that you open the, the, the lid off your tooth or bottle of pop, psh, it escapes. Okay, because it's not polar, and so it wants to get out of there. Whereas, you can actually determine the overall dipole moment, the overall dipole for a molecule, just by adding the, the vectors. Okay, and in Gen Chem, I, I, I wouldn't be asking you to do this, but perhaps in physics or some of your other classes, you, you would learn how to add the overall dipole. The the extent that I want you to know is, for example, here in water, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so it's pulling electron density away from each of the hydrogens. So overall, it's going in this general direction, and the electron density is being pulled towards the oxygen. So we can see here the fact that there's more electron density towards the oxygen, and it's cooler, meaning there's less electron density towards the two hydrogens in this bent um, version of of um, water, the bent molecular shape of water. So this is practice. Here's several different molecules. And so, for example, if we just start with hydrochloric acid or hyd hydrogen chloride, chloride is more electronegative than hydrogen so it will be pulling it more towards the chlorine. So that's why this is polar. If we look here at boron trifluoride, down below, we actually have three polar bonds between the fluorines to the boron. This is trigonal planar, and the molecular geometry is the same as the, the electron domain geometry. However, each fluorine is pulling equally. So overall, this is going to be a nonpolar molecule. Now we have carbon tetrachloride, which is also called te uh, tetrachloromethane. That's here in the middle. Once again, we have four individual dipoles, but all four of them are chlorine, and so in 360 degrees in three dimensions, it's pulling equally. So overall, carbon tetrachloride or tetrachloromethane is nonpolar. Whereas now let's take a look here at ammonia. Okay? When we see ammonia, the electron domain geometry would be tetrahedral because it's got the 
no pair of electrons. However, remember from the molecular domain, uh, the, I'm sorry, the molecular geometry, this is called trigonal pyramidal. So it's, it forms a little pyramid, and the base has three molecules on it. My handwriting is really bad. The nitrogen is more electronegative than the hydrogen, so it's pulling electron density towards the nitrogen. Since there's not that fourth moment, this is actually going to be a polar molecule. Now, let's go back to a tetrahedral carbon, but this time in the tetrahedral carbon, we don't have four of the same atoms around it. Remember, typically we consider carbon and hydrogen to be approximately the same, so we consider that, that to be a, not, not to be a dipole. But does this, which is chloromethane, which is also called, um, well, I mean, it's chloromethane, and chloromethane, there is a dipole present because the chlorine is more electronegative than the carbon. So because of this, just in general, more of the electron density is being pulled towards, as there is a disproportionate pull. So one way to think about it is when you have a carbon that has four bonds around it, and they are not four bonds of the same thing, like in the example that we have here, all four bonds are made to chlorine, so they're being pulled equally. But in this instance, we have one bond that's a chlorine and three bonds to hydrogen. Any time that at least one of the bonds is different, it's going to be polar. Unless the bonds are to carbons or between carbons, because there's not a difference in electronegativity between carbons or carbons and hydrogen. So if there's one chlorine, it's going to be polar. If there's two chlorines or three chlorines, it's going to be polar. Or if you had three chlorines and a fluorine, it would also be polar. So what do I mean by that? I'll just show you. So we have a carbon, a fluorine. Let's just do something different. Maybe it's a bromine, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. So let's put in the dipoles. We have a dipole here towards the fluorine, and there's a dipole towards the bromine as well. So overall, this will have a dipole. It will have a dipole moment, and it's in this general direction. Hopefully this has helped explain things um, in the fact that you can have a... It is possible to have a nonpolar compound that has individual dipoles within it. See you in class.